Okay, so how does the story go? Back in the day, I was around 17 years old, something like that, 16, 17. And I started experiencing pain in my shoulder. I was like, nah, I'll just work through it. It's fine. And I worked through it. And it was, uh, it was fine. It was okay. Carried on. Took super droll, powered through it, didn't really feel much. And then uh, after that, I was finished, whatever. Carried on with life, lived normally, whatever, whatever. Got back on the cruise when, when I started training in, where was the next place I started training? In the States, I felt it again. Okay, so I didn't have a full range of, range of motion. And now I know that that's called shoulder impingement. And I never worked on it. I was just like, power through it, power through it. Yeah, you're fine, you're fine. <sighs> to think back to it, I wasn't fine. It was just making it worse and worse and worse. Now I'm sure I may, maybe I'm being a little over dramatic. Maybe I'm not, but now it stopped me from training when I'm feeling the most motivated I've felt in years. So what's the problem there? Problem was me being a dumbass, to be quite honest. Me not going to PT or doing PT on my shoulder because it's relatively simple, the exercises you can try to do for your shoulder to try and get it, you know, get that full range of motion back and stop that that pinching of the shoulder to, through, your, uh, through your bone, to your shoulder bone. So it's basically a weird feeling. Like for me, for example, when I get to, let's say I'm lifting my arm here, when I get to here, ow, and then I have to power through it, and then here it stops hurting already. So from around here to here, my range of motion is dead, right? So not really great when, excuse me, not really great when after five years you finally feel motivated to train and work on yourself and you know, and I, was, I got to the gym this morning, I tried to lift, I couldn't even bench 50 kilos, nothing. It was nothing horrible. And I started thinking, what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna, what am, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna manage to, uh, to train, I started just going down this negative fucking rabbit hole. I'm just gonna have to bleep that, I think, but actually, I don't care. Negative rabbit hole, and I was like, okay. And then I was like, no, let me carry on training. But I'll train, for example, first I'll do the PT. So I did half an hour of physical therapy for that, for my shoulder. Yes, you maybe should be going to a physical therapy specialist, but I'm relatively aware of how to do the exercises that require for your shoulder impingement to get better. So I was doing those exercises, I did them for a good 15, 20, 25 minutes, something like that. And after that, I was like, okay, well, let me not waste my session here. Let me go at least work out some stationary isolation movements for my triceps and my biceps, but aren't using my shoulder. I'm thinking, what's everybody thinking of me, you know? And however much we don't care about what people think of us, we do a little bit. We always care a little bit what people, what are they saying? Everybody does. Bullshit if you say you don't. It's fucking bullshit. You do. But at the end of the day, you just got to power through it and just consider nobody actually, maybe they don't even care. At the gym, they usually don't give a fuck about what you're doing. They focus on themselves. Nobody's there to make fun of you or laugh at you. So me lifting a two kilogram weight to do my... my uh, excuse me, my physical therapy for my shoulder. Nobody's looking at me and being like, oh, he's weak. Back in the day, I thought that a lot more and I would just go to the gym to feel powerful, you know, but now I just don't give a fuck. Why? Because I'm just being me, I'm doing me. I'm training for me, I'm not training for anybody else. My friend back in the day, he saw I was like Shane Lightfoot, shout out to him. He fucking told me, he was like, dude, you don't have to, you don't care what people are thinking about you here. Just come and train, you train for yourself. I was 17 at the time. And then I was like, hey, you know what? He's, he's, my friend was, at the time, Shane was a lot bigger than me. He was quite, quite buff. And he was just like, just don't care, bro. Don't look at me what I'm doing. Me and you can do different things. Maybe you can do another exercise stronger than me, or, you know, I, can, I can't do it as much as you, but it doesn't even matter. You're there for you. Don't focus on what other people are thinking about you because it's going to just damage you even more. You're not going to want to go to gym. And that perfectly caveats to my next point where, I stopped training because I was like, oh, I don't care. People, people aren't, uh, uh, you know, people are probably talking about me and how weak weights I'm lifting because of my shoulder. Because my shoulder injury has been following me my whole, my whole life. It's been like, sometimes it's not that bad. Sometimes it's really bad. Like now it was flaring up and I couldn't even, I couldn't bench. I was telling you, I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So what are the next steps? You know, what are the next steps? What am I going to do now? Well, <laughs> I came home and I was like, oh, maybe I should just stop training again. And then something triggered in my head. I was like, don't fucking do that. That's what you've done all these years. You're like, you hurt your shoulder a little bit and then you just stop training. Oh, there we go. That's done. I can't do that. I don't want to do that. 
Why? Because I can train other things. I can train legs. I can train isolation movements on my arms. I'll see with my back. Maybe I can do some back exercises that don't require me to use my full range of motion on my shoulder or require me to use my shoulder that much. So we'll see. I mean, I can do abs. I can run. I can do cardio. I can do all sorts of stuff. And at the end of the day, if PT doesn't help, physical therapy doesn't help for the next four to six weeks, I'll just go and get it operated on. It might be a little bit more expensive. I might be out of actually out of gym for like two, three, four, I don't even know how long, a month maybe. But at the end of the day, if you have that goal of, you know, I've got to carry on no matter what, not forcing yourself to like, oh, power through the pain. No, go around the pain, work on your legs, work on your abs, go run, do something different. Don't just, don't just demotivate yourself immediately. I came when I was in the shower and I do my best thinking in the shower, like a lot of people. <laughs> I'm fucking sitting in the shower for like half an hour. Water's gone cold already. I'm like, oh shit, I have to get out of here. Thinking about myself, thinking about my life every time. And all of these things that brought me to make the same mistakes over and over again of basically just quitting something because, you know, it's too hard. You can't quit when it's hard. And this sounds like a motivational speech. You just can't. You have to go around it and do something else. So to be honest, this motto that I'm using is just get up and go get it. You know, get up and go fucking get it. You know, Chris Bumstead said, well, pressure is a privilege. So a lot of people don't get to experience, you know, a lot of people just don't respect it. But you have to, you have to keep moving. You have to keep going forward. You have to keep, you know, working on yourself because if you don't, you're just going to end up a fucking bum. That's just true. You're just going to end up a fucking bum. And that's what I was for a long time, sitting, sitting at the fucking table, doing nothing, eating shit, uh, fucking not moving, sedentary job, corporate job for five years now, you know, get up off your fucking ass and go get it. So that's my, that's how I feel right now. So what, what am I going to do? I'm going to work on my PT every day, work harder to get the shoulder better so that I can lift those weights that I want to lift so that I can see improvement in myself. And so I can be the better version of myself, you know, because my goal is to lose weight, to look amazing by it end of next year or middle of next year to look really good for, for the summer, you know, and overall just to carry on in that space of fitness and, and just that's the, the sphere I see my life going in now. But to be honest, I still fucking love junk food. Who doesn't love junk food? Who doesn't love eating badly? Who doesn't, you know, it's all easy. That's easy. Preparing your meals is difficult, you know, so yeah, that was basically that. That's my little rant and, uh, I'm going to end the video there. I'm not going to go on for too much longer. It's just basically me recording my thoughts and what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking right now. And if I can motivate at least one more person to, to work around, whatever, this is just an injury that's, that's happened to me now, shoulder impingement. But if I can motivate somebody else to go and, you know, do something instead of just quitting fully, do something else, go around the problem, you know, find a way because you can for most things, not everything, of course. And I'm not a doctor, I'm not a, 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 a sports scientist, so I, I can't recommend that you train this way or that way. That Consult your doctor for that. I'm not the guy that's going to do that. I'm going to tell you what I'm going through, what's going to be hopefully working for me and what is working for me and what didn't work for me in the past. So overall, that's up. Thanks very much, guys, for tuning in. Uh, drop a like, drop a subscribe. If you want to see more videos, comment down below what you want to see. And that's going to be that. Have a killer, killer day, and I'll speak to you all soon. Cheers.